peaceably. Oh yeah, the coin. So there's the coin. We were talking the other day about empires and the colonial era, and we tossed around a couple of... Uh, we were talking pretty fast. The music, it was the day the DJ, the, 30, the, the DJ who was 30 years younger than me was in here, and... Uh, you know, we were listening to music and we were talking about a lot of different things. And I was reminded of this coin that I keep around all the time. And of uh, when we think of the empire's ending now in the 21st century, I think that it has a historic context that's been slathered onto it that makes it seem like it's ancient history when it's not really that ancient. Uh, within my lifetime, my father's lifetime, there are, you know, there are places where it didn't end until like 74, you know, or you can say even later in some places. Um, but I have this coin, and it's an Indian rupee from 1940. Okay, can you, can you get that? Let's see if we can get that. I think you can, right? And it has on it, when you look at the uh, face, the heads aside, Like that. Maybe it's fuzzy on the stream. I don't know. That's George there. George Sixth King Emperor is what is printed on this coin. 1940. And uh, probably my dad passed it on to me somewhere in all the different coins he's given me over the years. And I keep it around as a reminder of why the discourse we were having the other day is not um, like new flash in the pan conversation but a long time building we're in the dawn of reframing the colonial era and in 1950 you had Cesare M.A.'s discourse on colonialism I'll just add that here 1950. Um, uh, I probably have a way you can just look at it. M.A. Césaire. Right? Which is what? I think it's 1950, isn't it? Something like that? Yeah. It's an essay from 1950, okay, in which he stayed associated. I mean, Europe is indefensible. So there was this point in the middle of the century after the wars when it seemed like there was going to be real dialogue about how to uh, flip this script. Major pieces happened. Uh, a famous one is the Situationists, of course, uh, 1950, that same year, on Easter, charging into the... Uh, into the Notre Dame during the Easter uh, Easter Day ceremonies, dressed as monks, running to the thing. Uh, Sergei, about uh, what was that the, the artist's name? I forget now at the moment. It's a shame. I feel ashamed when I forget those things because I want to credit them. But you all know the story, probably from Lipstick Traces uh, by Grail Marcus. But in 1950, there was this moment, you know, and the culture was poised. And then between 50 and uh, 68, the thing began to bubble and get crazy, and 68 is the collision, right? It's uh, 50 years ago, and this year we didn't get enough 50 years ago about the people's side. And so what ends up happening is 2018 is ending, and it'll be 51 years next year, which is what nobody remembers anymore. They like doing the markers on the, gotta do it on the 10, you gotta do it on the 50, you know? Try to sneak in the 25 and the 75 to make a little more money, right? But the hundred, the fiftieth anniversary of nineteen sixty-eight, the assassination and murder of Martin Luther King, Jr. in April, which, if you've read anything, I've interviewed the authors of books who have written and proven uh, government and FBI and agency involvement. There, then you have the man leading the entire nation, Robert uh, F. Kennedy, and. Uh, 
taking California and about to become, you know, all right, let's get this on, and his assassination. Then you have Mexico City, Paris, the Olympics, in October, 1968 was, this year, very actively suppressed, wiped over, and erased by a tactic of um, sucking the volume away, just not doing anything about it. This tactic was used in a smaller format to the anti-war protesters of 2002 and 2003 culminating in the 15 million worldwide on February 15th, 2003, that I call World Peace One, that happened independent of the, the utter suppression of it happening and the erasure of it since then uh, by the wars themselves and um, so many other changes in policy to our society, uh, Patriot Acts, etc. The sort of fascinating thing to me is there was reactions on both sides. There was a change in thinking. There was, you know, well, we outspent the Soviet Union, you know, and then there's all this stuff. And then the 90s felt really, uh, if I'm honest, that's when I was feeling pretty free and good about how we in the United States were going to, you know, now start transitioning into really growing up. And then the 9-11 attack. And when we say they bombed us into the Stone Age, that was a almost a horrible joke we started to make there, but it's true. We, we now got knocked backward again. And in this era for the last 18 years, it has felt burdened by uh, a, an irrational reaction funded by and sponsored by huge entities far beyond any of us. So that, that all happened as the digital generation was beginning, and so hence documenting it in the 24-7-365 way. So, if I'm a person who's 51 now, and I'm poised with, I still have one leg in the end of the 20th century, and I've been a documentarian the whole time, and an artist and a writer, and I've made notes, and I'm careful about all the things I'm collecting, part of it has to be an expression about... Um, what I have called in the past a parallel history. A parallel history that you could pick a zero point for. It could be, say, for example, um, November 22nd, 1963. Okay, I'm going to take that as my origin. And uh, one side of history is going just like this. One side of history, very quickly, within seconds, is going like that. President dies an hour after being shot by lone sniper. The message. And I'm going to not, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to divert, divulge from that diversion right there. And then I'm going to look at, uh, you know, you can, go, you can pick any date you want, really, in history and do this. And you can create for yourself, right, for yourself, a parallel history. And then you can... Uh, Go and find uh, evidence or books or research. You can substantiate some of that or document it. Or you can find lots of people who are, you know, doing that. About the JFK thing, for example. Or um, about uh, the attacks on, on our country on September 11th. Or about the assassinations we were talking about earlier. Or really about all of 68. Or about the placement of uh, not just you know Russian agents, but come on, United States agents have been toying with uh, editorials for decades. They just magnified when it became digital, and I think that there's a deep state problem here. Um, there are people who are just not the enemy, and what they want is peace. And there's way more of, the, of them than you think. And the constant drumbeat toward violence has become so crass as to cheapen the nation and make people more ignorant because they cling to one thing like uh, 
a need to, to have guns a certain way or whatever. I mean, total freedom and guns. I think we're poised now to... Um, oh, 